Welcome back. This is the fourth video of my five-part series, Selling Your Home for More. My name is Steve Nickerson with Realty One Group. The title for this one is Strategy is Everything. On this video, I'm going to introduce you to a powerful tool that I created to help bring awareness to the situation you may find yourself in so that you can hit the ground running when you are ready. It's called the Strategy Planning Matrix. Think of it as a blueprint to widen your options and help you boost your home's marketability and its value. I'm gonna break down all the various scenarios and some of the pluses and minuses of each section of the matrix. The thing to consider as I cover this is whether you must sell first to buy. If you do have to sell before buying your next home, then it's very important to recognize the urgency in which this creates when purchasing. I believe this puts you at a disadvantage if you're not preparing your home now for the market in the anticipation of selling it later. There are tactics with every strategy and I'll discuss a couple of them after I explain the entire matrix. Now keep in mind though, everyone has a situation that's unique to them and there's countless approaches you can take, so seek out expert advice when appropriate. The first quadrant on the matrix is sell now, buy now. I call it A2. Working in the A2 quadrant means it's go time, show time. You are active on all fronts. You're dialed into all the options on the market to purchase and you're on the market for sale or you're about to be. This is the most exciting and the busiest. It's a real estate broker's job to bring order to the ensuing chaos of the many moving parts of your upcoming transaction to make sure things go smooth. Even the most experienced home seller can suffer market overwhelm. Key here is to just trust the process and find the right broker that is experienced in handling all the details from start to finish. The next quadrant is sell now, buy later. I call it AP. I like this strategy best when you have a specific need in the home that you're looking to purchase. Perhaps you need a one-story living situation or you're waiting for a home with a perfect view. The thing here is that you must sell in order to buy. This strategy puts you in the best position to buy when you find that home you desire. The drawback is you probably will end up having to make a double move into a short-term rental unless the buyer that's buying your home is giving you a longer rent back allowing you to stay there for a while. The good news is that buyers, if they want your home bad enough, they will give it to you. It just takes a little faith and a plan B in the event that you don't find the right home right away. Quadrant three is sell later by now, also known as PA. I like this strategy a lot, assuming that you don't have to sell in order to buy. Because as a buyer, you're in a stronger position not having to sell your home first. The only challenge is, if you want to sell after finding the next home, then timing is everything. Because in most cases, when you have your home on the market, it's best that it's being lived in and being shown furnished. This also may put pressure on you as having to sell later if you now own two homes. Another key here is a strong pre-approval to assure the other side. I recommend Loanne Rissler with Homebridge Financial. She does my own personal loans and, it, and she's great at helping take care of buyers who need to have the best buying power without selling their current home. The last quadrant is number four, which I call P2. This is where I find most people I, I meet for the first time. This is where you're in no hurry, but you're looking at home options and you're doing the things we've discussed in these videos, getting yourself in position and ready to sell. Because most likely you'll have to move into A2 as soon as you find the home you want to purchase. The key will be to be market ready so you can hit the ground running. A common tactic of A2 is making, making a conditional offer on the sale of your current home. Now a lot of people are the mindset that a seller won't do a conditional sale in a hot market. This is simply not true. If you use a broker that knows how to communicate your strengths as a buyer and the marketability of the home that you must sell. The strategy though, when you find the next home you purchase or want to purchase is to make the offer with a conditional sale of your home selling before you close on the next one. I help with these types of deals all the time, but the other side, the seller of the home you want to buy and their broker, they need to know that you have a marketable home and you're ready to hit the market. You're asking them to take a risk by taking their home off the market to sell you, then it's your job and the job of your real estate broker to prove that. Now remember, every situation is different, just like the people in the home involved. A great broker will find the openings that you need to make this tactic work. Again, have faith. Another tactic that works on all of these quadrants is positioning yourself as a buyer who doesn't need to sell. You probably want to sell and, and will before closing on the new one. However, making an offer without conditions is always best. 
My suggestion here is to get that pre, true pre-approval without having to sell, then making your offer non-conditional, but with a little bit of extra time to close. Next step, assuming you've prepared and are market ready, is to hit the ground running and put your home on the market in its best light and with the right pricing strategy to attract the right buyer. A great broker isn't going to sell you short in this process. Your urgency to sell should never be communicated to the marketplace unless the market is slower and you're getting really motivated for an offer. The reason why this is important is because we want to avoid a buyer thinking that they can get a better deal because of your urgency. On the flip side of this, time and time again, I have saved my buyer clients five to $10,000 every time I sense this type of urgency from a seller. This is where having an expert to represent you and negotiate on your behalf makes sense. These are just a couple of the strategies. There are many more for the various situations. Now, there are a lot of real estate brokers in the market, but they are not all created equal in their abilities to represent you. On the next video, I'm going to share with you how to hire a world-class real estate professional. And make no mistake, I'm applying for the job too. I'll see you on the next video.